Doctor, please. Oh, Doctor, please. I think you've made a mistake. I'm fine and I don't need people. You don't understand all my choices. But yes, I guess I do have vagabond ways. Welcome to the show, Marianne. Thank you. Um, Marianne, there it's you nice are to be here. singing about vagabond ways. Do, mm. do you still consider yourself to, to be a bit of a vagabond? Oh, yes. Fully paid up member. Yes, of course I. I mean, uh, I, I, I think it may be what I wanted most out of becoming a musician. And what I got was itinerant status. When you described touring um, in the early 60s, when you first sort of hit the road, yeah. you weren't very happy about it. You found it terribly draining, didn't you? And it, I but did, you seem but to have changed your attitude to I it. I think that, in a way, you're taking that from the book. In a way, the book dwelt more, and I don't really know why, but I think maybe dear old David Dalton had an editorial um, mission as well to make it appear worse than it really was. I mean, I actually had an awful lot of fun on the road in the 60s. I really behaved badly, you know. I slept around, I, I, I did all sorts of dreadful things, but I had a wonderful time and I loved it. I did lose my nerve, of course, because I, I got frightened, I thought, because I was still so conditioned from the convent and the whole sort of way I'd been brought up. And I began to believe that I was a really bad girl and I was being promiscuous and something terrible would happen. And so I brought it on myself, really. Then I got to get married, which, which wasn't a very good idea for me. <laughs> and so I didn't have the, the balls yet to, to say, no, I am not that sort of woman. I'm going to be who I am. I didn't have that. And I have only really, you know, Vagabond Ways is the first time I've really said it completely. I've, I, I nailed my colors to the mast. But I wondered as well if it was because you, most of the real emotion of, of, of you've channeled into your songs rather than, yeah. than into the book in a way. That I didn't expect, yeah. I mean, to write the book, I really had to detach a little bit. I couldn't have done it otherwise. It was terribly hard and I nearly had a crack up while I was doing it. We had to rewrite it three times because once I'd started it, it had to be right. I'm still not really happy with it actually. but. Anyway, so yes, when I came to write this album and, and really work on it, I think I put into it all the things I would have liked to put into the book but couldn't. Well, what makes you unhappy with Excuse the book? The, the thing that, 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 that struck me was that sort of two-thirds of it is devoted to your life with Mick Jagger, who, in fact, that you were only with for four years and I you've know. had three subsequent, or three marriages throughout your life. I wondered <laughs> why, if it's, well, if it's without your help, that it's become this incredibly defining I think, period. I don't know. I mean, it, that must have been what we were paid the money for. Um, and it was a lot of money, and that's why I did the book. I needed the money. I wanted that. Um, I think we did a very good job, but I do think it went on a bit too long about the 60s. You, you said, I think, once that, that, that your mother taught you how to use your looks, but that on an awful lot of occasions you'd always seen them as a bit of a curse. Do you think you've always had quite a mm. schizophrenic um, attitude towards your own beauty? Well, it didn't seem to do me many favours. I mean, I'm, I had such a wonderful time with Mick, but a lot of the time it was very hard. Not really because of the beauty, but because of the expectations of the men. Um, the thing about not having to... When I was young, 17, 18, 19, I really didn't speak because it was too disturbing to people. And I didn't really show anybody what I was really thinking or how, how my brain worked until Broken English. That's why Broken English was such a shock, because it showed them, it showed people that I, there was a real person in there, thinking thoughts, having opinions, you know, and rather clever too. And they did, it just, it was really difficult to sort of hold myself back. It may have been the period I lived in that, um, we really were expected to hold ourselves back much more than you are now.
Mm. I know you feel that, but if there is a little more, you've got a little more room to be yourselves. There's still a lot to get through, but you do. I mean, it was extraordinary for me. When I was in Edinburgh, I met one of my old friends at school, and um, she married a lawyer in Edinburgh and all gone through with her life. We were two of, we were the two cleverest girls in the school. And I, she told me things I didn't know. After I left school to go on tour with the Hollies, the prizes for the previous year were announced. And me and Kathy had won the, um, the religious studies prize jointly. We were so clever, which was like divinity. It was on that level, A level sort of stuff. And, um, I'd forgotten all that, how incredibly clever I was, you know, and how weird it must have been to walk into this other world and realize that I had nothing to say. I could only talk about... Or feel that you had nothing to well, say. I didn't. I just didn't know anything. I can't imagine. What I knew was not relevant anymore. But I had to... So I didn't speak for, for years. And one of the things I loved so much about Mick was that he could talk to me and we could talk. But you do describe him as, I mean, he sounds pretty much like the perfect boyfriend, which is certainly not the image that I think most people have of him. Maybe well, he's changed dramatically. No, no, he hasn't changed. He's just the same as he ever was. No, he is the perfect boyfriend. He's the perfect, perfect everything. The trick with Mick, and I've said this before, <laughs> I'll say it again, is that what should happen is that he should be allowed to have his marriage and his children and all those things that he wants and his respectability and his home life and have his girlfriends. <laughs> then he'd be fine. Well, I'm sure he'd be deliriously happy. <laughs> yeah. But didn't, didn't you describe um, Jerry as very similar to you but grateful? <laughs> That's a bit cruel. <laughs> I I've sort of... I, I've, I've, um, I, really, we, I really appreciate Jerry now. I think she's, she's a good old thing. You've become a, a sort of role model for a lot of um, <laughs> well-known contemporary women from Kate Moss to Courtney Love to Sinead O'Connor. I think they're all kind of doing rather well, actually. I'm rather pleased with them. But what kind of role model do you think that you are to them? What is it, do you think, that fascinates them about Well, them? I obviously don't really know, you know. How could I tell that? Um, I don't think it's, it's what could be perceived. I mean, it, being... My friend doesn't mean that you have to drink a lot and take a lot of drugs and sleep around a lot. That could be perceived as what it means, but it doesn't have to. I mean, that's not really what my life has ended up being all about at all. It's about um, working very hard, being rather disciplined, in fact. And survival. And getting through and understanding it, understanding what you're doing. If you're going to go out and sleep around a lot or take a lot of drugs, then understand it. Don't do it unconsciously, like a fool. You, you also said that... Which um, I did. <laughs> but then you wouldn't be the woman you are today, and you wouldn't well, be this you know, fountain of knowledge. I'm just saying what everybody my age has always said to younger people. I'm, I never thought I would, but I'm saying, don't do what I did, do as I say. A, a journalist recently reading up uh, on your life came across an obituary that was written for you. I think it was in yeah, 1972. Yeah. Which seems a bit premature. But why do you think that you <laughs> have... There must be quite a lot of them now. I mean, they've been hoping for years that I would croak soon. But why do you think that you've managed to defy them? I mean, why do you think that you were a survivor where, where others weren't? Because you really have. You've been through more than most of us will go through in 20 lifetimes, had we? I had. don't know. And I, I can't really claim any any particular brilliance about it you know of course i'm very very stubborn and naturally once i realize what the game is i i will do my best to outwit everybody but i think it it really has to be put down to a, a lot of luck you know the whole thing in australia really could have ended very different when you tried to commit suicide mm. and i'm really glad that it didn't end like that I really am. And it's one of the reasons I love Australia so much, because it was one of the only places they could have saved me. And um, I'm so glad. And I mean, now, when, when I look at my life, and Nicholas and Carol and Oscar and George and... Your grandchildren. Yeah. And all my friends. I mean, my mum and dad have gone now. 
but I still feel them. You know, they gave me so much. And, um, you know, I just like to think that, and Mick and Keith are still around, you know, I like that too. We don't know what will happen, how long, but it's, it's wonderful. Director Jim Sheridan recently optioned your autobiography yes. and uh, I know there's sort of been talk about who might play you but do you have a, a, a personal favourite or someone who you're absolutely adamant you wouldn't I like can't, to play? Well, I'm adamant that not Courtney. Why, do you think it's too obvious not Courtney Love? I don't know why. I just... I, maybe I'm wrong, you know, that's the other thing. I may not know what I'm doing, but I just don't think so. First of all, I think she's too American. And um, I just don't think that the drugs are the point of my story at all, at all. And that would sort of nail that in. That's why I don't want Courtney. I think she's a very good actress. I think she's, she's fine, you know. She's a bit too much of a celebrity for my taste. I really like a, a real actress. And I'd really like somebody not so American. I don't really want a Hollywood superstar, though they are wonderful, of course, and we all adore them. That's not really what I want. If there was a movie made <laughs> about your life, isn't this where you'd like to, yeah. to see it end? This is exactly where I want it to be. Everything is happening. I couldn't have made it up better. It's safe with Jim Sheridan. It's safe with Frank. They'll find the right actress. I know they will. It'll be OK. And I will go to the first night, and I will be very proud. Marianne Faithful, we're very, very happy to have had you here today. Thank you.